In any war, servicemen often follow not only official instructions but also unspoken rules, a kind of unwritten code of conduct, often including some ethical norms. Snipers during World War II also had such informal laws. Before being sent to the front, soldiers were ideologically tuned to fight the enemy, forming in their minds an image of a ruthless and inhuman enemy. However, many veterans later noted that after a few months in the trenches soldiers began to think more pragmatically. They came to realize that on the other side of the front line there were people just like them who also suffered from lice, hunger, thirst, and deprivation. If warriors of the opposing sides were opposite each other for a long time on positions, Sooner or later they began to agree on some small everyday issues, unwritten rules of war emerged. This also applied to snipers, who could stay in the same position for days, tracking each other as if in a game of cat and mouse. During World War II, snipers tried not to shoot enemy soldiers when they went to the toilet. However, in most cases, this rule was observed not out of pity for the enemy but in order not to provoke return fire. By the way, connoisseurs claim that such informal toilet immunity still exists. Shooting at nurses was also considered extremely undesirable. Even the most cold-blooded snipers were still human beings first and foremost, and some of them could not bring themselves to kill an attractive female nurse. This written rule, however, did not apply to wounded soldiers whom nurses attempted to treat on the battlefield. Another unspoken rule of snipers concerned water. On established, entrenched sections of the front, in case of water shortage, the opposing sides agreed not to open fire on water carriers. However, commanders often did not recognize such informal rules of ordinary soldiers. Therefore, in the presence of officers, snipers tried to deliberately miss the enemy's water carriers. Both the Red Army and the Germans understood perfectly well, if you shoot the enemy water carrier, your water carrier will be killed in retaliation, which will doom both sides to thirsty torment. Sometimes there were abandoned farms, warehouses or cellars right on the front line, where you could find food or other useful items. An amusing incident occurred in early 1945 when Soviet troops began to liberate Hungary. One of the villages in the mountains was right in the epicenter of the front line. The inhabitants had left, but there were still some food supplies there. Since in those days neither side could occupy the abandoned village, the Germans and the Red Army agreed and set a certain time for each of them to visit the village. Of course, during such visits, snipers did not fire. There was an informal rule in Wehrmacht units that allowed snipers not to wear the distinctive patch, a black eagle's head with an acorn and three oak leaves at the bottom. This was allowed for the safety of the snipers themselves. The thing is that among ordinary soldiers, snipers were strongly disliked. Red Army Sergei Le Levitsky explained the reasons for this attitude. Everyone went to bayonet attacks, exposing himself to bullets and shrapnel, and the sniper fired stealthily, killing the victim, who did not even see him. According to the laws of war, this was considered a despicable act. Therefore, captured snipers were almost never taken, but shot on the spot. German snipers tore off their patches, knowing full well what consequences it could have for them. 